What's up everybody, Atticus here. So a lot of you have been coming in my stream and asking me questions about add-ons, keybinds, macros, and a bunch of other warrior related stuff. So I figured I'd just lay it out in a video for you so you guys have something to refer back to. Let's get into it. So to start it off, keybinds. Mine are kind of simple, kind of straightforward, but then some of them are a little confusing. So we'll go over it real quick. We got one, two, three, four, five. And then we've got C, R, Z, X, F, Q, E. And then everything on this bar above it is just a mirror of that with a shift modifier. So you got shift one, shift two, shift three, shift four, shift five, shift C, shift R, Z, X, F, Q, E, you get the point. And then the bottom bar below it is going to be mouse button, I believe five. It is the one that's furthest away on the side of my mouse. And then mouse button four, the one that's closest to me. And then this is a shift mouse button furthest away, shift mouse button closest. This is control mouse button furthest away. But then this is starting to mirror this bar up here. We've got control C, control R, control Z, control X. And then for my stances, I scroll up, I click my mouse wheel, and then I scroll down. So let's go over macros. So with all my macros, I put pound show tooltip and I put slash start attack. The pound show tooltip is just gonna show a tooltip for every ability like it normally would. And then the start attack is just going to make sure that whenever I press the ability, it starts my auto attack. Now, all of my abilities have a, uh, they don't have a name, they just have a space. And that makes it so that there's no text written at the bottom. Like see, if I were to go to the rend one right now, change name or icon or whatever, and then I just typed a bunch of stuff like this, hit save. Now you see at the bottom of my rend ability, it says ASDA, whatever. So what I do to make that look pretty is I just put a space and then press OK. And now there's nothing there. And you can see the space by just highlighting like that. There you go. So we've got charge next and you've got the pound show tooltip, the start attack, and then this dismount that just takes me off of my mount so I don't have to manually remove it. And then you've got cast hamstring and cast charge. Now what this does is if they are within my melee range, then I hamstring them. But if they are out of it, then I charge them. There's still a dead zone but this can uh, keep you on top of somebody a little bit better so you're not having to switch between two different buttons and missing a charge or missing a hamstring. Thunderclap, same deal. It's just gonna do the start attack, cast Thunderclap. Then we've got the hamstring, same deal. I don't even use hamstring anymore though because I just have it macroed into charge and intercept. And then heroic strike, easy one. Then my battle stance has my two-hander added into it. Now, if you're in combat and you're switching your weapons, it will start a global cooldown. So you should have other abilities that switch your stances without equipping weapons, just in case you need to switch really quick to press something. Now, defensive stance, same deal. I've got my sword and shield macroed into it. This is just a start attack for Sunder. This one actually casts battle stance and then cast overpower. I, because I have it in my berserker stance, it just makes it easier. I don't have to change, you know, my buttons or whatever I'm pressing. If I see a dodge pop up, I can just press one and then I can keep spamming one and I'm already pressing overpower when I switch into the stance. Shield bash, same deal. It uh, equips the weapon and casts def defensive stance and then casts shield bash. Now, the only reason I have this one is because I had it set up from when I was leveling and didn't have pummel yet and it was my only option for interrupting. But now I just keep it up because I can just switch stances if I'm tanking or whatever by doing that or um, just use it on my bars whenever I'm in defensive stance and tanking. And then revenge, same deal, easy one, cleave, easy one. This one's a retaliation, it just casts battle stance before retaliation. And then we've got execute, I've got dismount macroed into that. This is challenging shout, easy one. Shield wall, same deal, puts me in defensive stance, puts my sword and shield on, then it casts shield wall, just so it's a one button press to use it. Then we've got disarm, this one puts me in defensive stance without changing my weapon, so that's useful. Then we've got the Berserker Stance, which is the same as Battle Stance. We've got Battle Shout with a start attack, and then we've got Shield Block here with Defensive Stance and my Sword and Shield macroed into it. Sweeping Strikes with Battle Stance in it. Intercept with Hamstring in it. We've got Mocking Blow with Battle Stance in it. Berserker Rage with Berserker Stance in it. Demo Shout, easy one. Whirlwind, easy one. Pummel with Berserker Stance in it. Mortal Strike with a Dismount. Got Cancel Aura Bladestorm. This is one I was using with Ravager. The aura or the buff that it gives you is called Bladestorm. So this way I don't have to press another ability. I can just press this and it'll stop spinning. This is a Recklessness with Berserker Stance. Piercing Howl with a Start Attack. Thunderclap with Battle Stance so I don't have to actually manually switch into Battle Stance to use it. Then we've just got random ones that I was using for different weapons. This one's just for a target macro that I've been using for Ubers. 
This is for laughing at alliance. If you put it like this and slash say, it says M-U-H-A-H-A. -A. So just muhaha. It's kind of funny. Death wish for when I'm fury, bloodthirst when I'm fury, and then that's just a guild spam. All right, moving on to add-ons. Now, I don't use a lot of add-ons. None of them are necessarily warrior specific, but they are useful. So Z-Pearl is the one I use for my unit frames. It's got a lot of different customizable things in it. Um, super useful. I've used it forever. Then we've got Atlas Loot. Atlas Loot, you can just look at all the stuff for, you know, dungeons and different PvP sets, different other kinds of sets. Like, it's just got, like, almost every piece of gear in the game. It just doesn't have stuff that comes from Quest, basically. But uh, it also has this useful feature where you can right-click the icon, and it brings up a menu where you can make different lists, and then you can add items to that list so you can kind of track what you've got and what you still need. Bartender is what I use for all my bars down here. To configure that, you left click and you can drag them around like this, and then you can right click and enable different ones and change different, like, you know, size of them, the padding between the buttons, the uh, positions, you can fine tune it and whatnot. So that's uh, super useful, keeps your, bar, your UI looking really clean. I've used this one forever as well. Next one is super useful, it's called Trinket Menu. Basically, you just mouse over this little thing right here, and then you've got all your trinkets that you have in your bags listed. And you can just click one and it swaps out with the slot that is on top. And uh, if you're in combat and you click on a trinket to switch, it doesn't switch it obviously because you're in combat, but it queues it up to switch. So as soon as you leave combat, it'll throw it into that slot for you. The next one is Plater. So it changes out the default Blizzard UI here and then it'll show the duration of any debuffs that you put on the target, except some of the debuffs, I don't know if it's bugged or if it's intended like this, but they don't show up, like Mortal Strike doesn't have a duration for some reason, but it's supposed to be up there for 10 seconds. But um, it's super useful for tracking what you need to keep on the target and whatnot, like especially for PvP when you're trying to throw up a hamstring or something. You don't want the hamstring to fall off, obviously. Another one that I use is Classic Cast Bar. So what it's gonna do is display a cast bar under your target right here. And then if you want to, you can have it under the hovering name plates as well. But with Plater, it has one built in, so I just turned that part of it off. And then the last one is Titan Panel. I don't have it enabled right now, but it's just a bar that goes across the top of your screen and it shows like your location, your gold that you have, the XP per hour you're getting, how much like durability you have left on your gear. You can throw on like how much ammo you have left and whatnot. Just, it helps tracking things a little bit easier and just makes things, just makes the quality of life a little better. Now let's go over talents. So this is a decent PVP build, also decent PVE build. There's certain little things that you can change, but to quickly go over it, this is almost exactly what I use for leveling as well. Two points in deflection, three points in rend, five points in tactical mastery, two in overpower, one in anger management, three in deep wounds, two in impale, five in two-handed weapon specialization, five in axe specialization, one in sweeping strikes, one in improved hamstring, one in mortal strike. And in Fury, we've got five in the Booming Voice, five in Cruelty. We skip this entirely because these are both trash. One in Piercing Howl, four in Improved Battle Shout, and then five in Enrage. Now, the way that you would switch it up or, or for PvE, you might throw in one point here for Improved Charge, maybe, instead of putting the uh, point in Improved Hamstring. And then over on the Fury side, in PvE, you're really not going to be taking that much damage, much less getting crit. If anything, it's going to be like AoE damage that you're probably not going to get crit by. So Enrage isn't that good, so you could throw it in, you know, Improved Execute or Improved Cleave or Finish Out Improved Battle Shout. But, um, yeah, I mean, I use it like this because I like to PvP and it helps when you're killing stuff out in the world too. Now, when you're leveling, the progression isn't this simple. It's not just fill out each thing as you go. So what, you, what happens is you get down to this point and you've got one in improved overpower, one here, three there, right? And then you've got enough to progress to the next tier. Then you put two here and you put three here and you've got enough to progress to the next tier because you want to get sweeping strikes like right away at level 30. So then you get sweeping strikes and you put five here and then you go back up and get your improved overpower and then get your two in two-handed weapon specialization to finish that out. Then you've only got one point left and i like getting improved hamstring just because it adds a little extra to my ability whereas all the other stuff that's available just makes certain abilities a little bit better this one adds something that you do not have a possibility to happen so it's useful and then with fury 
Uh, when I'm leveling, I put three in Blood Craze and then one in Improved Battle Shout, just because the little bit of extra healing helps out a lot, and the little bit of extra attack power isn't as beneficial as having a little bit of a heal. But it's dealer's choice. You can do whichever you want. They're both useful. Again, though, like I like this one because it adds an ability that you don't already have. All right, so let's go over rotations. Rotations are going to change a lot as you level, but you want to always try to start off with a charge, and then you want to battle shout if you have less than 30 seconds on your battle shout buff or if you don't have a battle shout buff. So for levels 1 through 35, you're basically going to be spamming Heroic Strike the whole time, but if your arms, Improved Rend will actually cause your Rend to do more damage than a single auto attack will sometimes, and it only costs 10 Rage, you just have to make sure that you're actually going to be fighting that mob long enough for the entire Rend to go off. Now with Heroic Strike, it's good, but it takes up an auto attack, so it costs more like 25 Rage instead of 15 Rage. So Rend is actually worth, it just depends on what level you're at and how hard your Rend is hitting for. But for the most part, Heroic Strike Spam is where you're going to be. At level 20, you can also get Cleave, and then you can start weaving that in depending on how many mobs you're fighting. But then at 30, you get Sweeping Strikes. And then at, once you've got Sweeping Strikes, you're basically just going to try to take on two mobs, at like two levels lower than you. You're going to Sweeping Strikes, and you're just going to Cleave Spam until they die. It speeds up your leveling a good bit. But then once you hit 32, you can start using Berserker Rage, and you get more Rage, deal more damage, etc etc but then 36 comes around and you're gonna look like sweeping strikes whirlwind and then cleave if you have 55 rage or more you don't want to miss out on using a whirlwind just because you have enough rage to use an ability does not mean you should use that ability then from 40 to 60 you're gonna be using mortal strike or bloodthirst if for some reason you're leveling as fury I don't agree with it don't do it but yeah, so 40 to 60, your prioritization is going to be Mortal Strike, and then Whirlwind, and then Cleave or Heroic Strike, depending on how many mobs you're fighting. But always have enough Rage to use Mortal Strike. Once you have Mortal Strike, that is your bread and butter, unless you're fighting more than one mob, obviously. Now with tanking, you're always going to want to try to charge in if it's safe, but most of the time you're going to have to LOS, so you're going to have to pull with your bow or with your gun or a throne or whatever. And uh, with single target, all you're going to want to do is just spam Sunder until you have five, and then you're going to Heroic Strike and keep Sunder stacked up. Don't let it fall off. That's where the Plater add-on comes in. You can see the duration left on it. So for multi-target tanking, if you can charge and there is no CC out, then Charge and Thunderclap, drag back away from CC if there is any, Zerker Stance, Berserker Rage for more Rage, and then Whirlwind, and then D Stance. That's just when you're like lower level. Once you get up a little bit higher and people are generating more threat, you're going to want to just sunder to the kill target twice and then tab sunder, tab sunder, tab sunder to the new kill target two to three times, tab sunder, cleave. So sunder is your basically what you're spamming the whole time. You just want to kind of dictate like, you know, okay, I've got one sunder on this. That's not going to get healing aggro pulled off me. Or I've got two sunders on this. Okay, I can leave that alone for a second long enough for me to put a sunder on something else. Then sunder, sunder, sunder. But yeah, Cleave, Sunder, Whirlwind, Thunderclap, all the AoE abilities. Demoralizing Shout is also very good, um, but it's more so to stop from healing threat. Like I thought, if you put a, like a Thunderclap and then a Demo Shout on everything, your healer's probably not going to rip threat off of you. It's still possible, but it's probably not going to happen. Now, Battle Shout is also good for holding threat, but Battle Shout generates threat based on the amount of friendly targets it hits. So it's actually super beneficial if you're in a group with like a hunter and a warlock, that adds two to the amount of people that you're giving battle shout, so it generates a little bit more threat. But that wraps it up for this video. I hope it helped you guys out. If you're watching this the day it's released, I'm currently live streaming over on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash Atticus. I'll leave a link down below. Like the video, subscribe, and comment. And until next time, stay strong and stay hungry. See ya!